Hi guys, it's Raw Girl here, also known as the Sosa E. I'm here with Dr. Victor, who um, whose business is called the DC Dentist. Mm -hmm. And you can find him, I will put his address in below so that you can find him if you want to go for a checkup here in DC. I just want to ask him a few questions sure. about, wait, first of all, I don't think that many people have even heard of holistic dentistry. Uh, yeah. So could you talk about that just a little bit? Yes. So holistic, holistic biological dentistry is where you use alternative modalities in the dental work that you do. So you would use homeopathic remedies, supplementation, aromatherapy, you know, any of the alternative mo modalities that you would use in order to make the patient's experience better and also to treat them better. I mean, dentally treat them better. It helps in, uh, it helps in their treatment. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Cause, yeah. Because usually it's only focused on fixing what's wrong with the teeth and that's it. Yeah, yeah. So the whole, the, the, the philosophy about biological dentistry also is that you, you try not to put too much stuff in the patient's mouth that is detrimental to the whole body because we see the body and the mouth are connected. You okay. know, sometimes in, in uh, Western medicine, you know, they try to compartmentalize things. Yeah. But in holistic uh, dentistry, the what you put in the patient's mouth has an effect in the patient's body. What happens in the patient's body has an effect in the patient's mouth. Wow. So that's okay. how we, that's the philosophy of it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um. So, what would you say is the correlation between diet and oral health? Oh my gosh. Most people yeah. don't really. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess. What people tell us when we're young is don't eat candy, don't eat sweet stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. only really all they tell us. Yeah. But I think it's deeper than that. Oh yes, I really do. I think that um, diet has a huge influence on overall health because what I found personally in my practice, those patients that have like a good diet, whether it's like uh, a healthy organic type of diet, and they don't, uh, they stay away from a lot of the processed foods they tend to, to, to show that they have less cavities. Mm -hmm. So from just my own experience. Mm -hmm. So I think that diet makes a huge difference as far as how your, um, how your oral health is. Because uh, the, like you said before, what happens in your body is reflected in your mouth. Right. Your mouth is a part of it. If your mouth is, is if you're able to uh, put in the right fuel for your body, then that's going to be reflected in your in your mouth for sure. That's great to know. So mm -hmm. so more so processed foods may be an issue. Oh my gosh, processed foods, the white foods, the white flour, white, flour, white, white sugar, sugar, you know, all of those things. Uh, a lot of sweet stuff, you know. Um, and I would even extend that to like um, you know a GMO and you know all kinds really? of things like that. Yeah, I, 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 what I've seen is, yeah, that there's a difference. Yeah, huh, that that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And how do you feel about, because I think we had a conversation about this when I came, but how do you feel about the whole, like, you know, fruitarians and raw foods that eat tons of fruit? Yeah. That's still also a problem? Yeah, you have to be careful with that, you know, because the fruit is still sugar. So if you're going to eat a lot of fruit, then what you want to do is you really want to make sure that you, after you eat, that you either like brush or rinse or something, because the same way that sugar stays on your teeth, if you don't take it off, the fruit, the sugar from the fruit will stay on your teeth also. Mm. So you really want to make sure that when you do that, that your, your oral hygiene is still pretty good. You know, it's good that, because we talked about putting stuff in your system, it's good to put fruit in, in your system as opposed to sugar, but we have to understand that there's still sugar in fruit. And then that is something that's really detrimental to our teeth, is sugar. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. that's good to know. Yeah. Um, so I have a really popular vi video on mercury, mercury removal. You do uh, that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you talk to us a little bit about mercury removal? I had my own crazy experience with it. Like, once I took them out, it changed my life. Seriously, really? it was really bad. Yeah. Um, but why is mercury so bad? Yeah. Why are dentists do that in the first place? Are, yeah. are people still doing that? Or? Yeah, I think some people are still doing it, uh, but majority of the people have stopped putting in mercury, but there's still a lot of mercury that are in, that's in people's teeth from when they were placed before. Yeah. You know, so um, we see that there's like an issue with mercury um, because you, that's something that you don't necessarily want to have in your system. And the thing, you know, the thing is with, 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 um, 
with dentistry, when you put something in somebody's mouth, mm -hmm. it's in there 24 seven. It's not like wow. you take it out. So it has like a constant effect. So that's why you really want to be careful what you put in there. Right. Because it, it uh, you don't want it to have a detrimental effect. You're trying to help somebody and then you put something in there that's like bad for them. So um, mercury and the mercury fillings is, um, is what they used to use like a, a, a while back. And people generally, dentists generally don't use them anymore. Some people still use them. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are going, a lot of dentists are going away from it. Not because they see mercury as being a problem. It's because they see that it's not as aesthetic as, as the, um, the composite film. So the composite okay. ones are your teeth colored ones. But the murky ones are the black ones, right? And, and then now everybody's you know, into com cosmetics. Like, is there so. a specific type of composite people should be asking their dentist for? Yeah, there's different types of composite. You want to ask for a composite that has no um, 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 BPA in it. BPA mm. is like a, you know BPA? Yeah, yeah. isn't it in water bottles? Yeah, right? so it's like in plastics, plastic, right? Plastic, yeah. yeah. So you want to ask for, uh, you want to make sure that they use like a composite that doesn't have BPA in it. That is like the that's that's like the biggest thing that you have to really. Okay, like, yeah, I didn't yeah. even know that that was <laughs> yeah, a thing. Yeah. And why would BPA. you not want BPA in your well, closet? It's the same reason that you you don't want the BPA in the water bottles because what happens is that it can it can leach out. And oh, if you go wow. on the internet and you look at BPA, mm -hmm. you'll find like a ton and ton and ton of stuff. Well, that's really BPA. good to know. So that if you're able to get a uh, uh, some composite that doesn't have BPA, they do have them out there. Mm -hmm. Then it's much better to use that than to use the ones with the BPA. Okay, yeah. that's really great to know. So mm -hmm. no BPA, guys. No Stay BPA. away. Yeah. Um, what do you think, what for you is the biggest thing that most people make the mistake about oral health? Or just the biggest misconception? Yeah, I think the biggest mis misconception for me is that that if something doesn't hurt, then it's okay. Then everything is okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, that's the biggest thing for me because a lot of times when patients come in, I was like, you know, you need to, you need to take care of this and this and this, but you know, it, but it doesn't hurt. So right. I'm just gonna. It's like it's like I'm gonna wait until it, until it hurts. Yeah, but when it when it if you wait until it hurts, then that's even like then you're in the chair. I'm trying to I'm trying to help you. You're like nervous. It hurts. It it just makes yeah. it worse for both of us. So what I would say is that uh, prevention is the very best way that you, in dentistry and in our office and our philosophy, it's prevention. If you could prevent stuff and head stuff off before it work, mm -hmm. before it hurts, mm -hmm. then that is, you're in a much better place. The, your dental visit is a lot, uh, is a lot like uh, better. It's a lot calmer. You're not in right. pain. You're not like suffering. Right. You know, it's much, it's a much better way to do it. You know? But how do you know? I think that, I think that was the perfect answer to that question because like, I don't know, I think about the same way. I'm like, if it, if it doesn't hurt, I should be yeah. hurting. But, um, <laughs> but like, how am I supposed yeah. to know that I'm well, in problem area? Yeah. Like, so then that's, that's when you go to the dentist and then they can tell to you, To make right? sure that yeah, I'm to make sure, Yeah. So then that's the other thing. You go, you go and uh, you get regular checkups just to make sure that everything is okay. Okay. You know, because then if, if something changes, if something happens, then at least we can, we can head it off before it becomes a problem. And then the x-rays are going to tell you. What's yeah, wrong with because the stuff that, stuff that you could see with an x-ray, you can't see that stuff with your naked eye. True. So it's, um, it, it helps that you're able to, to look at that and then you can tell the patient, okay, well, you know, let's do this and this and this before it gets to be an issue. Okay. But you know, I must say, honestly, really what you want to do is when you go to the dentist, if you don't have to, it's best if you just do prevention and maintenance and not have to do a lot of dental work. Mm. You know, like, you know, do like a whole, whole, whole bunch of dental work. You mm -hmm. know, if you just stay in prevention and maintenance, then you'll be good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Um, I think, oh, well, I think this, or I sort of just asked you this question, but I was like, what other signs are, can there, can people look for mm -hmm. that are like flashing red warning yeah. signs besides just like, oh my God, my tooth hurts. Yeah. So even before the two thirds, maybe you can look for, if you have like bleeding gums, then that's an issue. Because what happens is that if, the, if you have bleeding gums, it means that there's some kind of infection, some kind of inflammation. Okay. And what I tell patients is that if you touched your arm and your arm bled, you would run to the doctor immediately. Right. But because you're, and you touch your mouth or you brush your teeth and it bleeds and you're like, oh no, that's what I just figured out. <laughs> it's a problem because right. our, teeth, our, our tissues are not designed to touch and bleed, right? Right. So that is a problem. If you have teeth that are loose, yeah. that's a problem. You know, another one is that if you, if you wake up in the morning 
and you have like tension in your jaw or you wake up in the morning and you have like headaches mm -hmm. or you're you notice on the tops of your teeth like they're like wearing away mm -hmm. that's a that's a problem or your teeth are starting to chip it means that you're grinding your teeth and then you might have like some issues with your 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 jaw joint oh wow so if you if you see your teeth are starting to chip especially at the front they, mm -hmm. they start to chip and chip and chip it means that you're grinding so those are all kinds of things that you need to you need to be aware of because enamel is like the hardest substance in our body. Mm -hmm. It doesn't chip for no reason. Okay. Yeah. If it's chipping, then there's a there's, there's an a issue. Serious mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe like two more questions. I want to know how you feel about because people have been talking about this bone broth thing, like mm -hmm. restoring cavities yeah. with bone broth. I'm yeah. like, ew. First of all, I don't eat meat, so I'm like, that's nasty. <laughs> you want me to go? <laughs> you want me to go buy some bones and boil them up? Yeah. And drink it like that's just yeah. A, yeah. I just want to know yeah. what your thoughts. Are I assume the the <laughs> I assume the, the the process on that is that I guess there's calcium in the bone. Okay. And then the calcium when you drink the calcium, I guess you're going to uptake that calcium and it's going to go to your teeth. I assume. So you think yeah. it's mostly about the calcium? Which I believe you can so. Get from vegetables. Yeah. You I, well, I don't know what else it could be about with the bone broth, but I, I think that that's what it is. They uh, say the people. The, what I've heard from some people who you know talk about this is. They say it's something about mineralizing yeah. the body yeah. or the teeth or remineralizing. Remineralizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can remineralize. I mean, but the thing is that with remineralization, mm -hmm. I don't know how bone broth works mm -hmm. because I'm, I mean how how well it works. Mm -hmm. But um, you're able to remineralize sometimes when the cavity is just really, really, really tiny, really small, really just starting. There's a, a product, there's a paste that we use sometimes that's called MI paste. Like right. M and I. That's the one you showed me last mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So that has like calcium, it has like potassium, it has all kinds of stuff in it so you can remineralize. But if you have like a big cavity, it's then there, yeah, there's no remineralizing for okay. to get that fixed. Okay. Yeah. Um, last question. I'm, I want to know, because we do, I do a lot of stuff about longevity. Um, mm -hmm. I have a class called Staying Ageless, and it's like all about like how to yeah. live long, etc. Oh, and I know one of the biggest things as you get older is like, I don't want my teeth to fall out. Yeah. Like, so how do we make sure as we're young, like, yeah. and as we get older that our teeth actually don't fall out? Wow, that's an excellent question. Because, you know, um, the way that you do that is making sure that you have enough bone around your teeth, right? Mm. So in dentistry, bone is so very important. If this is the root of your tooth, mm -hmm. it sits in bone like this. So this is better than this. The way that you get the bone to stay like this is by doing the brushing, the flossing, and coming to see the dentist. That is the biggest thing about keeping your teeth. If you're able to keep enough bone around your teeth, you should be able to, we tell our patients, you should be able to keep your teeth for the rest of your life. Okay. You really should be able to keep your teeth for, for the rest so of your really life. So really brushing, flossing. Yeah. Because the, the only thing, the things that uh, decrease bone in our mouth is that if we have bacteria, like if you have like those bleeding gums and yeah. if you have like bacteria, because the bacteria eats away at the bone. Okay. And then so if it's like this, then the bacteria will eat the bone and eat the bone until it gets closed. So if you keep it clean and healthy, then you have like a much better chance. There's no reason then you shouldn't be able to keep it. So that kind of makes sense to me though, because whenever I've seen anyone with like rotting teeth, you, mm -hmm. it's more than one. It's not like it's just one. Oh, yeah. oh, so yeah. it's clear like an it's infection generous. has yeah. happened, right? Yeah. Or oh, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, it's so important if we, because as we start to age and as we start to, um, as we start to live longer, as we start to live more healthily, we want to be able to, if we're going to live till a, a, an older age, mm -hmm. we want to live a good quality of life, right? Yeah. So you don't want your teeth to be dropping out and you can't eat and you have to have dentures. I mean, why would you right. do all that? Yeah. Keep your own teeth, keep it healthy, just like your body, right? Right. You do stuff to prevent stuff from happening, you have to do the same for your teeth. And your your patients, I say your patients, your, um, your people that come to see you mm -hmm. um, should be able to do that. They should be able to keep your teeth. And by the way, I think that's a great concept, that longevity concept that you have. That is really awesome. Thank yeah. you. It's good. Thank you so much, Dr. You're Victor. You're welcome so much. All right, guys. So um, check out all the links below. I'm going to put a link to his website and his address and anything. And what's the best way for people to make a new appointment? Just call. They can call the office. Just call mm -hmm. the office. I'll put the number yeah. there, too. You can even make your appointments online. Okay. Yeah. Online, too. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>
green roof. Yeah, it's called the green roof. So what the green roof does is that uh, when rainwater comes down, mm -hmm. the roof soaks up the water, and then it's less water that goes into the uh, into the sewer system of the city. So if you could imagine, if everyone had a had a, a green roof, then you wouldn't uh, it wouldn't tax our sewer system so much. The other thing that it does is that uh, when the when you have plants on the roof, it makes uh, it cools the temperature inside of the of the building. So then you don't have to your utility bill is less because you don't you have to use as much energy in order to cool the building. Or even it, it keeps it insulated in the in the, uh, in the winter time so that you don't have to use as much to heat it. You don't have to use as much to keep, uh, to cool it. So it decreases the utility bill that you have. It's That's good for the amazing. environment. That's yeah, really it's amazing. good for the environment. It's good for the planet. And you guys got a. What was it, 2017 Most Sustainable, what was it? So uh, we were finalists uh, for DC, the Department of Energy uh, Sustainable Businesses in, in Washington, DC. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes.